Welcome to Joa Fitness Health Wellness Video Podcast, a space to ignite your day through positive conversations. We bring people that have created excellence in their life, sharing high vibration in their reawakening path. Hello, my friends. Happy Friday. My name is Joa Rivas, and I am the host of Back Into Alignment. Back Into Alignment, it was created four years ago as a way to spread awareness of our body because I, particularly personally, I have scoliosis. When I was 15, due to my chronic back pain, uh, I was affected physically. As a young teenager, I could not do regular activities because my back was limiting my function and from my own pain i learned so much as we talked before pain is a big teacher and instead of um, feeling frustrated i empowered myself to find solutions and to understand what was happening to my body after 10 years of practicing yoga pilates receiving therapies from so many doctors and, and chiropractors, physiotherapists, my back got better to a point that I was waking up with no pain. And it was for me a miracle because the very first time I took to a doctor, they told me, you're going to be living with this pain for forever. So I actually lived for 10 years with no pain. And then I tell you a story very soon about what's happening to me. But before we continue, I wanted to introduce right away to our guest. He's been with us for three weeks and it's Dr. Keon Curlew. He's here in Toronto. We are in Canada and it's actually almost the long weekend of Canada's day. Super, super happy because this is the best season for us in Canada. Summer. So how are you, Dr. Keon? I'm doing well. Thank you again for having me. I really appreciate it. And I'm excited to get into our conversation today. Thank you. We have been actually sharing conversations about your career, because actually one of the most important parts for us is to engage our community. And I love to hear the stories about how the doctors became doctors of how the business owners actually start the seed of creating something and it's so interesting that you actually shifted your initial goal to be a soccer player into now being a doctor about movement right and it was from your own pain that you shifted your the, the direction of your life to now and now you're putting a team of professionals not only you but a team of professionals that are helping our community here in toronto and, and over, overall, this is so exciting because it's also an inspiration, perhaps, if you're listening to this podcast and you feel that like you're not fully um, present or perhaps you are curious to do something new, we encourage you to, to, to get the call and pick up the phone and start doing what you have to do to actually uh, do what you love, basically. So you can actually, from there, become become your full potential in life so this is how we are actually i i changed the direction of my life the same way because my pain and now it's much easier when you actually do things that are giving you purpose so dr kim has shared with us topics related to lower back pain so if you have lower back pain you can come back two episodes uh, two weeks ago we talked about lower back pain causes and treatments and last week, we, we talked about uh, the Achilles tendon and something that is related to the soccer players, because actually Keon was a soccer player when he was a teenager. And then at his young age, he continuously was getting injuries until he actually realized that something was happening to the mechanics. And today, we wanted to talk a little bit more about Torstenny. Torstenny. So the knee is a very complex uh, joint that it is engaged in most of our activities because it actually gives us that cushion and that support in our legs. Um, very blessed that we, we have those beautiful legs that allow us to walk. And from that, I wanted to share today 
the issues that can happen around our knee. I actually, I don't think I ever have talked about the knee in four years. I think this will be the very first talk about the knee. I have talked about sciatica, I have talked about hip issues, but the knee in particular, this will be the very first time. So Kian, why don't you tell us a little bit about the complexity of the knee as a joint and also about how compromised we have the knees in terms of a sport performance? Yeah, so the knee, I think the most important thing to talk about is the function of the knee and it's what it primarily does for us. So it's known as a hinge joint in the body, meaning we have two bones that meet and it, it's basically just like the hinge on a door, it goes in one direction, forward and back. There's a little bit of rotation that the knee can do, but the 90, 95, 97% is gonna be that hinge movement. Um, one of the unique things about the knee is where it's positioned. It's between the foot and the hip. Now, I think we need to talk about those two joints as well because everything in the body is connected and it all works together when we run, when we jump and we perform movements. So the foot is, is basically just like our hand. It can move in many different directions. We have a bunch of tiny bones, tiny joints that make up the foot and it does very fine movement, very specific movement. And the hip is a ball and socket joint which is basically a round circular uh, end on the bone, which fits into a socket and it can move in many different directions. It can rotate, it can move forward, it can move back. So when we analyze the different joints above and below the knee, we notice that we have two movable areas above and below. And then we have a very limited area that just does one movement. And that's where we often get into injuries if we're going to have damage to the knee and it's not caused by someone hitting it or running into it and it's caused by something like running, we need to assess as therapists the foot, we need to assess the hip, and we need to see how those two movable joints could be compromising the knee. Okay. Yes. Actually, Dr. Keon uh, is actually addressing very important things because as this podcast is back into alignment, uh, the alignment it, it starts from the feet all the way to the head and we cannot take away that we work as a unit and sometimes we forget about this and some, sometimes the knee issue is actually coming from above or below right so coming from this uh, by the way I skip a little bit uh, about Keon so if this is your first time listening uh, who is Dr. Keon? Well, Keon is actually a kinesiologist and a chiropractor uh, from the University of, of New York, which one um, it was, the, yeah, the New York Chiropractic College. Uh, you've been doing the practice for, for many years and you actually are the co-founder of LabX Clinic, which is here in Toronto. So if you are actually listening to this podcast and you are in Toronto and you want to get to shake hands with Dr. Keon. I welcome you to visit him in the Liberty Village where he is right now. And he just chatting with us about, in this case, about knee injuries because he used to be a soccer player. So he really knows about this. And before we actually decided to talk about the knee injuries, he was telling me, oh, yeah, let's just chat about this because I actually had knee injuries before and I'm very related to this. Can you please tell us beyond the function of the knee, which thank you for explaining the importance to know what's happening below and, and uh, above. How was the knee, uh, what, what, was, what, was ha what happened to you when you had the knee injury? Yeah, for sure. I was actually very lucky throughout the majority of my career. I never had knee pain. I never knew what it felt like to have knee pain. And I always saw so many uh, athletes and soccer players complaining about their knees. So knock on wood, I was kind of very lucky early on. But when I did get knee pain, it was actually pretty bad. <laughs> so for me, I was, um, the moment that it happened, I was in the gym and I was weight training. So as a soccer player, you want to have strong legs. And I was doing lunges and I lost my balance and I fell inward. And again, the knee just functions in doing a very forward and backward movement as a hinge joint and when I fell I twisted the knee so I put a force and pressure into the knee that it, it's not supposed to do 
and I ended up tearing the meniscus in the knee. The meniscus is basically, if we think of the two uh, bones when they meet, we have cushions on the end of the bone and I got a little tear in one of those cushions. So yeah. when I move my knee, sometimes if I do it in the wrong direction, I can feel where that little piece of damage is. Um, I can talk a little bit about the healing time. Um, the meniscus doesn't have a lot of blood flow to it. Therefore, it takes longer to heal compared to damage in the muscle. If I ended up damaging maybe the quad muscle or a muscle on the outside of the knee, because there's a lot of blood flow to it, it would have healed very quickly. But because it's deep, deep inside the knee, the little pad uh, that cushions the bone, there's not a lot of uh, blood flow. Therefore, there's not a lot of the body's natural ability to provide healing and nutrition to help repair the damaged tissue. Mm -hmm. Is it a way to stimulate the flow on this particular area, like a massage or perhaps like a percussion therapy? Is it any therapy that is not invasive that can help us to stimulate the fluid? For sure. One of, the, one of the things that I did for myself and I recommend to patients is actually getting back into exercise. Okay. Because when we start to use the knee, we do increase fluid and we do increase circulation through the area. So massage can be very helpful. Um, shockwave and other non-invasive therapies uh, can be very helpful. But for me, the bread and butter is just getting back to exercise, getting back to movement in a very pain-free way. And then slowly, as it begins to heal, we start to increase the intensity, increase the intensity of the workouts. We run a little bit longer, further distance, more intensity. Mm -hmm. Well, this, this actually was a topic that I chose to talk because I love summer. I'm from Venezuela and I love summer and I love running. It just makes me feel so alive. And because it's summer in Toronto, I see so many people outside. I wake up at five in the morning and around six, I'm ready to do my stairs. I love to do stairs. Um, I'm not a good sprinter, but I'm definitely... I'm a good climber. I like to do stairs. I just feel like it is low. For me, it's low impact because it's just coming up the stairs and the way down and just gentle. And I, I get to raise my heart. But I do notice a little bit of a little pinching on my knees. And it's sometimes it's because I'm not warm up. So I make sure that I'm warm up correctly before I start doing the stairs. I notice that makes a difference for me. Um, but I hear a lot of injuries and I actually I was doing researches before our, our call today and I was actually doing researches out of the latest researches because when you do researches you can find information from 10 years ago and everything has changed especially with the sedentarism that has increased so much and now it seems like it's the opposite people are so tired of being at home they're actually out and that actually can produce a shock in the body right so like, be aware that if you have been sedentary for the last two years and now you feel ready and there is no restrictions and you just want to move slowly, you got to build a program that it actually will take you to your goal without putting impact in your body. And the research that I was finding was that there is actually more impact uh, of knee injuries on women than men. Did you know this, Keon? I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, that is actually about 41% of injuries occur on the knees, especially for sport athletes. Mm -hmm. And especially the ACL is one of the number one uh, issues that occur on the knee. So we have sprains and tears. ACL is always leading out. Now, I would like to know a little bit more about, more about ACL and what actually ACL means. Uh, to come back to that, A it stands by anterior, C by cruciate and, and L by ligament, right? So we're talking about a ligament that is on your knee that it can be actually uh, affected by, by injuries. Tell us a little bit more about the ACL. So the ACL, exactly what you mentioned, anterior cruciate ligament. So when we look at the knee, we have the two bones that meet and the ACL, and I'm going to mention the PCL, which is a posterior cruciate ligament. Both of them lie right in the center of the bone, and they attach one end of the bone to the other. 
the goal is it, it provides stability for the knee and it holds the knee together and it makes it very stable. It, hold, it creates that attachment for the hinge joint so it can move. So that's the function of the ACL and PCL. Now, uh, back to your, what you mentioned, how more women are a little bit more prone to knee injury. Uh, that has to do with, again, when we look at the hip and when we look at the foot, women tend to have a little bit, um, the hip size can be a little bit different. And this creates an angle called the Q angle. And the greater we have a Q angle, the, the more prone the knee is to twisting. So this has to do with just the way we're born. Some people have larger hips, some people have smaller hips, but the wider we go at the top, we essentially create more of um, an angle where the, knee is, uh, where the knee joint is being created. But when we run and when we jump, uh, if you think the foundation of a building, if the foundation of a building is actually bent right in the middle, right where the bend is, which is the knee, there's gonna be more of a possibility of a twist to occur. And that's where we start getting damaged. The ACL is designed to hold the knee stable. When we add the twist, it's gonna become unstable and that's where we start getting a lot of ACL injuries. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the research says that female athletes are 1.5 to two times more likely than the male to actually to get the ACL injuries. And like you're saying, because the, the hips on the woman are a little bit wider, it could create an imbalance on the distribution of the weight, right? So yeah, we as correct. women, we need to be more aware about this particular area. And very interestingly, I wanted to know why we always hear about the ACL, which is anterior, and why don't we don't hear about the PCL, which is actually the, the back of the, of the ligament, the posterior. Why there is so much emphasis on the front and not in the back? It has a lot to do with the way that we move. We're always moving forward, right? Okay. We're always running, we're always um, jumping forward. The anterior cruciate ligament prevents the uh, shin bone from moving forward on the femur, the thigh bone. So because we're doing all these movements of going forward, going forward, going forward, it's very often that when that twist occurs, it's going to happen when we're in a forward movement, put more pressure on the ACL compared to the PCL. Yes. And like the patients that you have with this issue, they come from pain or because they actually have already a diagnose from like which test you will be able to detect this issue? Most patients only come in after the knee is very painful. There's not a lot of preventative um, actions that a lot of people take. If after the damage is done, they're like, my knee hurts, let me come in. Uh, when I see them, I'm trying to evaluate every structure. I'm trying to evaluate the nerves, and I'm going through um, the big areas, the bone, the ligaments, and I'm going through the muscles as well. Uh, so I do my tests. And one of the things with the ACL in particular, or just the knee in general, I wanna do a lot of stability tests. And I wanna do a lot of compression. I wanna see if we bend the knee all the way back or we straighten the knee, are we getting pain along that movement pathway? If we take the knee through its full range of motion, do we have pain? If we don't, I wanna add stress to it. And I wanna see, can it actually, uh, is there stability present? If I notice that I'm adding stability to the ACL, I want the, the ACL to be stable and I'm adding pressure and forcing the ACL to work, but there's pain or a lot of movement, I'm gonna be thinking there's possibly an ACL injury. Mm -hmm. And we can remember actually one of our athletes, I wanted to give a shout out to Elena Gospel, uh, who got actually an injury on the ACL this year. And it was a, a games ending knee injury on the team of Canada and she had an ACL and a meniscus issue and unfortunately she had to stop uh, and rehabilitate mm -hmm. so like in a very excruciated level like how long would it take for someone to heal from an ACL issue athlete soccer player we're probably saying it's, it's pretty much a season ending injury um, you're going to have to come back the next season. If you have to do the surgical approach, if they're going in, I'll mention this, the ACL or when the ACL is injured, it's common to also injure the meniscus as well. 
So there's two things to fix. You got to repair the ACL and then you got to repair the meniscus. The meniscus is that cushion on the end of the, uh, the bone. It tends to go hand in hand when we add that twist uh, and we exceed the uh, capacity of the knee, we end up injuring both. It's typically a season ending injury because not only do you have to go through the surgery to repair, even if it's just the ACL, now you have to uh, get the knee to be able to move pain-free. Then we also have to build back the stability and the strength of the knee also, we have to build back the foot in the hip because that athlete hasn't been running. And then we have to get into more athletic movements, power, sprinting side to side. We need to build back up athletic resilience, but we also have to get our technique back. The person hasn't been running for five, six, seven months. They need to fine tune the function of the foot. They need to fine tune how the hip is moving because everything works together. And uh, that's often the phase where an athlete is rushed back into playing. When they're getting into that athletic movement and the coach is saying this athlete is looking pretty good, they're ready to go back in, but they're skipping out on looking at, well, the foot may not be, you haven't been walking, you haven't been running. Maybe the foot lost a little bit of its um, fine movement. Maybe the hip lost a little bit of its stability because we haven't been putting pressure on the leg. So those are some of the things, um, that's kind of the moment where we tend to see the injury happen again, or the athlete comes back too soon and they re-injure their knee. It's important to make sure you go through the full rehab process. It's probably better to take more time, make sure you do it properly so you don't get re-injured. The second or third injury to the ACL or meniscus, it just continues to compound and it's much harder to get back to the level you were at before. Yes, and we do have 13 ligaments around our knee, and you are commenting the, ones, the most common injuries that we actually can experience around the knee, and you continue bringing the keywords of stability. I don't know if you hear that, but I hear that many times, so that's a very good cue to understand that the stability on our body is starts on our feet. You can come back a year ago. I had uh, an opportunity to talk to Dr. Andy Bryan from Australia, who actually has been dedicated over two decades about food functionality, coming back to claim our, our natural way of walking, which is barefoot. He is a big uh, proponent of walking barefoot and minimalistic shoes. So come back to one year ago, Try to find those episodes with Dr. Andy Bryant. He has an amazing channel where he brings uh, very important information. He always reminds us, like, what do you want to choose, fashion or functionality? Uh, these shoes that are actually compromising the position of our toes. Remember, our toes are designed for stability. That's why I wanted to bring this because you mentioned stability. Everything starts on our toes. Everything starts on our, the plant of our feet. And in our big toe, our, our big toe is so important because it gives us the grasp and, and uh, all our bone, the bones, as you mentioned, in our feet will actually uh, connect to our knees. So it's so important to actually pay attention on our feet and having minimalistic shoes, be more uh, comfortable to walk barefoot. It's very important to have good stability from our feet so again, come back into those episodes where we just go deep into simple um, techniques of how to stimulate our, the plant of our feet. Very important. Um, Dr. Keon is in Toronto. He and I, we can actually talk about so many topics and we're just trying to select the ones that perhaps are important in this season because we are outside. I know you, we know that you are running. We know that you are, um, moving forward and may, perhaps you're not um, aware of what's happening around the knee. So I hope today's talk helped you to understand that our knee is a very complex um, joint that allow us to connect to our feet and our hips. And for women, make sure that you are wearing proper shoes, that you're doing your proper warm up. And for those uh, very energetic guys, make sure that you are preventing injuries, which at the end, our talks are more of a preventative talk. So if you haven't gone through uh, an injury on the knee, which thank God, knocking and wood 
I haven't ever. Uh, I, I just, this is actually a good reminder. Remember to warm up, remember to practice your stability exercises. Uh, and, and also remember that we're here to support you. So if you do have a little bit of a, of a sign that is actually porting or pinching, perhaps come and visit Keon to, to, the, to the Lab X or one of his specialists. He has a team of over six people working together. Um, Keon, last week we learned that the power of our influence is so important. You are very happy I have met you and you are a very uh, high spirit person. We are, at least myself, trying to surround it with positivity, people that are enhancing your life, making your life easier and fun. Fun is very important. I know you have a wall in your office about uh, jokes, which is fun, why not? <laughs> and I read some of the jokes are really kind of cool and, uh, and they're all anonymous. Some jokes are a little bit spicy and kinky <laughs> and some <laughs> are just, uh, you know, PG-13. So just very funny. It, it's good to be always throwing some jokes here and there. Uh, so I, I love the community that you are developing in LabEx. And I, I actually wanted to ask you today, what is your mantra? Uh, living, I know you have the mantra of LabEx, which is live your best, um, which is so uh, important. And it's one of the things I try to, to, to do every day. But what is your mantra this year? I love this question. <laughs> I love the surprise question. Um, for me personally, but like not associated with the clinic or anything like that, me personally, I don't even think it's this year. I think it's forever. It's just live without fear. Uh -huh. Just if you don't have fear, you're not you're gonna you're not going to be shy to talk to someone. You're not going to be afraid of thinking big. You're not gonna have a lot of that negativity. Um, so for me, it's just I want to approach everything just with being fearless. I don't want to end up 60, 70 years old and have regret. I want to know that I attacked everything and took every opportunity. The only way to do that is to be fearless. So that's the mantra. Yes, yeah. Very important to live without fear. And I actually, I, I say always that uh, when you feel fear, you can transfer the fear into excitement. Mm -hmm. It happens that I love to be in front of people and in uh, and, and front of public. And I always feel uh, nervous like I can never deny every time I start the record button in the zoom or I'm in front of people uh, with my fundraisers uh, raising awareness about what's happening in my country in Venezuela I feel that uh, kind of butterflies or like a little bit of uh, emptiness in my belly uh, which is a good sign of my body of, of feeling discomfort but at the same time instead of bringing fear uh, I think about excitement, like what an opportunity I have to raise awareness or what is the intention of this. Uh, so if you ever feel fear in any, in any situation, perhaps if you could feel the excitement of that the fear comes from, uh, from an unfamiliar or discomfort, or we always can grow from that. So very important. I really love the mantra of living without, without fear because at the end, this is, this is my mantra, um, which is not, I don't know if it's a mantra, but basically I feel, I, I live fully alive, right? I, I live fully alive because being, being alive, it will bring pain and will bring also, um, it will bring problems. And that's what makes me feel alive because those that are not alive have no problems and no pain. Mm -hmm. So I feel every time, like that by the end, by the time I, now that we finishing the talk, I wanted to, to come back to the very beginning. I was diagnosed uh, three weeks ago. Actually yesterday I got my MRI results of my neck and my lower back and I have arthritis in my spine. So in my neck and my lower back, I was diagnosed with arthritis and I also have a uh, four bulging disc. So I didn't know about this up to yesterday. So the last time I did an MRI is when I actually had scoliosis when I was 15. And now that I know uh, what I have, it is what it is, right? So at least I know what I have. And I, I know I have this because I actually have pain for the last two months. 
but I just telling myself that I'm sure I will be bringing more lessons um, for me and for the audience that have been following me. I thought I was going to be free of pain. And unfortunately the pain came back now that I'm 37. So it, it only gives me an opportunity to, to learn more and to read more and to find uh, professionals like you that perhaps are also doing researches of the latest technologies. And they are also helping people like me that come with a congenital issues and come with all, all this. And I didn't know, but every six women, one every six women experience, they actually suffer of arthritis in Canada. And there is actually an arthritis uh, association that I'm actually part of now. And I'm learning a lot about arthritis, uh, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis arthritis. And I'm just bringing awareness for everyone that got to the end of the podcast today that the pain and problems, we always make you feel alive. And the only thing we can do is to live without fear, mm -hmm. just like mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Keon says, um, just living the experiences of all the spectrums from pain to pleasure. We're here for, for life, for living life fully. So thank you so much, Dr. Keon. Um, it's been great. This is our third talk. And the more we talk, the more we get involved and the more we know uh, that we can do so much uh, together. I hope this inspire you to also be part of our community. You can send us a message if there was a aha moment or you actually want to share your story about what's happening to your knee or to your body. We are welcome you to send us a message directly to our Instagram. You have Dr. Keon Curlew uh, Instagram, which I already uh, an, added to the notes. And we also have his uh, LabX um, website too. And um, Dr. Keon, do you have any other words before we complete our podcast today? Just always appreciative. So thank you for having me again for the third episode. Always excited and uh, just looking forward to more. Yes. Okay. This weekend is a long weekend. We wanted to celebrate, to be outside, to walk barefoot, to hug your family and to feel um, as proud of ourselves to be in Canada, such a beautiful place that we're making these our, our home. So thank you so much. And remember that together we are stronger. Thank you. We invite you to subscribe to this channel and share with your community. Please leave comments below. And if you like the episode, click the like button. Have a beautiful day.